Welcome, everybody. Um, this week, this week uh, Jevin is up in Friday Harbor, and so uh, I'm here on my own. He'll be back next week. Uh, I get to talk today about one of my favorite topics in the course, which is data visualization. And the idea with, with, with this lecture is that data graphics are an extremely powerful way to tell stories. Looking at a big chart of numbers is very, very hard to, to take anything home from. But a data graphic can really tell you a story in a beautiful way. The problem is, is that data graphics can also tell you stories that aren't true if they're designed improperly or to be deliberately deceiving. And so I want to look at some data graphics today. I want to look at some of the ways that data graphics can be misleading. And then I want to look at uh, some of the ways that just plain old Frankfurtian bullshit creeps into data graphics as well. So let's dive right in. Scientific papers have been using data graphics for a very long time, well over a century, using sophisticated plots and diagrams that show relationships among multiple variables. On the left here, we see uh, a figure from Sewell Wright's sort of magnum opus uh, of, his, of his early part of his career on population genetics. Um, at the right, we've got, uh, we've got Edwin Hubble's paper in which he uh, shows these are the observations that demonstrated that the universe was expanding, um, both, uh, both almost 100 years ago. So, so in the scientific literature, we're used to this sort of thing. In the popular media, not so much. Popular media haven't been making very sophisticated use of data graphics traditionally. To be fair, they've been showing maps for a very long time. This is almost 100 years ago. This is an electoral map almost 100 years ago. You can notice the you know, sort of dramatic uh, north-south split. The Democrats take the south, the Republicans take the north. Um, and so, so we definitely see these kinds of, of data graphics uh, going way, way back. We see time courses. Uh, of, you know, so we see representation of how one variable changes in time. This one's kind of a parody from a, from a 1919 book where the time course, this is the quality of books being produced, um, the quality of the production, and the time course is actually broken out of its frame and, and, and crashed out. So um, you know, people are, are used to time courses in sort of popular media. We see charts that illustrate a single variable at a time. So a pie chart, for example. This pie chart says uh, what fraction of the members of the Masons are in which country, right? And so, um, so that's a single variable at a time. And we just can show most over in the United States and in the UK and Ireland and, and so on. Um, over here, we've got maturity of the marketable debt. And uh, you know, again, this is a single value. And we have you know, bars showing, again, time. And so you know, once again, we've got relationships, essentially, um, just of a single variable, right? Or a variable against time. Even when we typically saw data graphics in the older uh, popular media, it was, they were typically restricted to the domain of business, which was almost its own special technical domain. So we saw these um, you know, freight car loadings and stock price diagrams and, and so forth. The popular media typically weren't using data graphics to tell the regular news stories, for example, or to tell the stories about trends in society, or things like that. And when they did, they almost never used multiple variables other than time. So this is a very rare, rare exception that Edward Tufte found from 1976. And here Tufte is illustrating, this, this diagram from the New York Times is illustrating um, that in big cities, so for large populations, people walk faster on the sidewalk. So that's the relationship between two variables, neither of which um, is, is time. And uh, you know, just from my own memory, I remember when people from New York City would visit me in Ann Arbor, and we'd go walking down the sidewalk, and they'd get stuck behind somebody. And it was absolutely hilarious, because they just couldn't take it, Midwestern pace. Um, OK, so in fact, Edward Tufte did a study in 1982, where he actually went and kind of counted up all of the uh, all of the data graphics in various publications, and among English publications, the one with the most sophisticated data graphics. So he's looking for relationships among multiple variables where that aren't time, right? Other than time courses. So one in 50 graphs in the Economist is actually doing something sophisticated. Um, one in 200 in the New York Times or or Business Week, approximately none in Washington Post, Time, Wall Street Journal. 
So in 1982, you just simply don't have any kind of sophistication in the use of data graphics. People are used to getting all kinds of words. They're used to bullshit in the form of fancy rhetoric, but they're certainly not used to bullshit in the form of graphs because it's not appearing in the popular media. However, graphs start to really take off in the popular media around that time that Tufty was writing. So we get this skyrocketing rocketing number of data graphics in the New York Times um, you know, at, at five-year intervals uh, leading up into the present. So we're certainly seeing a lot more data graphics in the popular media. It's becoming a more and more popular way to present information. It's becoming a way that's sort of accepted for people to receive information. We're also seeing far more sophisticated data graphics in the popular media. So here are just a few examples from the New York Times over the last year. Um, these are all very complicated data graphs, complex data graphs. They're showing um, multifaceted relationships among multiple variables. Many of them are interactive. And they're telling deep stories. New York Times has a great big data visualization team of extremely good people that are telling deep stories using data graphics and helping people really dig in to information. And that's a great thing, by and large, because it helps us access information at a, at a, at a level of complexity and sophistication that isn't available from a simple news story. So by and large, wonderful. Also, they're so dynamic. These, you know, they really sticks in your mind when you, when you interact with a well-designed data visualization. The downside, of course, is that this is fairly new to people. Um, we haven't been looking at these complex data graphics in the popular media for a long time. And I think we're going to be much more susceptible to bullshit that people try to sell to us, either presenting misleading stories or just simply decorating their charts at the expense of communicative ability.